uh, in this video, I want to do this, this um, exercise uh, about sigma algebra. Um, there are two parts. The first one, so the assumption that M is an infinite sigma algebra, um, that means, so uh, recall, that, recall that sigma algebra is a collection of sets where sets are potentially from uh, the power set of the set X. So M is a collection of set. And um, when we say M is an infinite sigma algebra, we uh, simply mean that uh, M is a, in, is a collection and then there are infinitely many elements in M. And of course, this implies that um, infinitely distinct um, elements in M, otherwise if um, otherwise, it just be finite if we have the rest of them are not distinct, right? Okay. So um, there are part A and part B. Um, there are two different way. There are two different ways, but I think both of them are um, using the exactly same idea. So I will show both works uh, because one. Um, I, I like the, the writing of the first one, and then the second one, had, I like the drawing uh, aspect of that one. Um, and then for part B, it uses some knowledge from chapter zero, which is uh, chapter zero section, uh, mm -hmm. section three, which is about the cardinality. Um, nothing too complicated, it just uh, compares the cardinalities using, uh, using the functions, um, you will see. Uh, so let's start with the part A. Uh, so part A, so assume M uh, is infinite sigma algebra. Okay, so we want to argue that it contains an infinite sequence of disjoint set. So assume F is infinite sigma algebra, then there exists a sequence EI where I is equal to one to infinity, where EI is in M, uh, right? Otherwise, where EI, where, um, so, um, this could happen because M is infinite sigma algebra. Okay, but what we have here is a sequence of a uh, sequence of sets, and we are not sure if we're not sure if they are uh, disjoint or not, right? So we need to argue. Uh, so when you disjointify, like whenever you have a sequence of sets and you want to show something about disjointness, you need to disjointify the sequence of sets first. Um, hence define F1 is equal to E1 and Fn is equal to Fn, uh, En set minus the union I is equal to one to N minus one of EI. Um, so I claim that F, J, J is equal to one to infinity by uh, its um, infinite disjoint circles in um okay um so first of all fj's are in m. Why? Because certainly f1 is in m because e1 is in m. And f, um, fj is equal to this one. Let me change this to j, j, j. Okay, so because um, because e because this is a finite union of elements in M, and this you can this is also an element in M, 
And you can view this as intersection of the complement of this, where the complement is certainly is also in M because M is a sigma algebra. Therefore, the whole thing is in M. Uh, so uh, FJs are in M for all J. And another thing we need to show is um, FJ uh, is this joint sequence. That means uh, F K uh, intersect at J is equal to the empty set whenever K is not equal to J. So we, how do we show that uh, without loss of generality? So uh, assume K is smaller than J, okay? And we have K is smaller than J, and we know that fj is right on the definition for fj, which is equal to ej sin minus union, i is equal to one, j minus one of ei. So certainly we have that um, uh, we have that fj is equal to this. And since K is smaller than J, right? So FK must lie in, um, and FK is equal to, let's see, FK is equal to EK set minus the union I is equal to one K minus one of e, e I, right? And uh, notice that EK must be in uh, this union because uh, it is summation, it is a union from I is equal to one to J minus one. And um, because here we're really just trying to show it is infinite sequence. So we were trying to show infinite sequence, right? And whenever you look at the word sequence, that just means um, the index set is natural number. Or equivalent. So here, that's why we just use i is equal to one j minus one. But mm, as 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 part b hinted, um, this sequence may not be countable. Maybe more than countable. But we'll talk about that later. So here we have this, and notice that since k is smaller than j, that means k must be one of the uh, elements that you are union here. Therefore. Uh, so fk is equal to this. Uh, and notice this is in ek. So fk is in ek. Uh, notice that ek is contained in uh, in this set. Uh, therefore, uh, because fj is equal to ej set minus this, this part, right? And this part has EK in it, um, which means that this part has FK in it. Therefore, we have FJ intersect FK is equal to the empty set. Okay. Um, and therefore, um, I see, uh, let me see what else we need to check. So we already checked so for every element uh, in the sequence fj, every element is in M. Therefore, the sequence fj is indeed a sequence in the uh, sigma algebra M. And also, we also show that this is a disjoint sequence. And I think uh, when you show this is infinite sequence. Well, um, fj is infinite sequence. This is clear because um, e because E i is the infinite sequence. And, uh, right, and F j is defined in this way. So if we have infinitely many distinct elements, uh, E j here, then that means we, we can construct F j uh, uh, for infinitely many F j, therefore the sequence F j is infinite. Um, okay. 
And then that doesn't show the existence of, um, of this. The second part, uh, the second one I want to mention is, um, so a, let's call it A prime. Um, again, that we need to assume, uh, assume M is an infinite sigma algebra, right? And then um, take E is in M, um, then claim, um, M restricted uh, stick E0 in M and claim that M restricted on E0C, uh, which is defined as F intersect E0C um, is in uh, where F is in M. Uh, we claim this is infinite. Uh, so let's give short proof. Suppose not. Right, okay. So choose E0 is in, for every E0 uh, to exist. So exist E0 and this I will claim. Okay, so the proof would be suppose not, and then for every E0, so here E0 is any arbitrary element in M. Okay, take E0 in M um, and M such that, and uh, we don't do such as because this holds for every arbitrary element in the sigma algebra M. So take one set in M, and uh, we know that M restricted on E0C um, is finite, because our argument needs to show this infinite and we want to use a contradiction. Therefore, uh, right now we, uh, we assume it's finite. Then uh, since E0 is in M, uh, E0C is also in M by the property of sigma algebra. And M restricted on E0C complement, which is equal to M E0, is finite. Okay. And since we have M uh, is equal to F is in M, which is equal to um, F intersect E0 uh, is in M union. F is intersect E0 C F is in M, right? And then both of them are finite. So this is finite and this is finite. And because we're doing the union finite union, therefore this is finite, but we are given the the assumption that the M is infinite sigma algebra as we reach the contradiction. Um, hence, we show there exists the existence, uh, there exists uh, E0 in M such that M restricted on E0C is going to be infinite. Uh, it may not be a sigma algebra. We don't we don't need it to be sigma algebra, mm. but this is definitely a subset of, of M because uh, notice that E zero is in M, so E zero C is in M, and intersecting with another set in M is definitely going to be still in the sigma algebra M. Okay, and let's rename this to be K zero. Okay, and then now what do we have? Um, we have, now we can focus on this, this set and then uh, using the same argument, so there exists E1 in K0 such that um, K0 restricted on uh, E0C set minus E1 um, is infinite. 
right? Um, otherwise, you can uh, use the same argument to try to reach a contradiction that if, if this is uh, finite, then um, this, uh, so then k0 is c sub minus e one c is also finite, right? If this is finite, this is also finite. And together what we have is we have k0, e0, c is finite. But, uh, oh, sorry, but, uh, but here we already say that k0 is infinite based on our first, uh, that's based on, on the proof we show here. Therefore, we use contradiction. So uh, this must be infinite. And uh, continues, you can, you can actually uh, find as find a sequence of sets. Let's do just one more. So it's e2 and k0, such that k uh, restricted on e0, c, and set minus e1. Um, let's see. So we want to do something to simplify our uh, notation. So we will call this to be k1. Okay. So there is the e2 and k1 such that k1 on the restricted area, and here the restricted area is what? Um, is e0 c. Uh, Set minus, let's see. Uh, so here I can draw a picture. For example, uh, this is a set X, and here is set E0, and this is uh, the set E1, uh, E0C, and we're picking a uh, set E1 inside of this inside of uh, this region, right? So here, uh, E0 complements sub minus E1. This, this one is going to be this region. And then we show that K0 restricted on this region is infinite, okay? And now what we need is because it is infinite, then there must exist, right? It is elements. So what we'll do is we're gonna choose one, which is E2, as there exists E2, such that um, such that um, what we can, um, such that um, E2 is any, there is just the set E2 on this red region. Okay. Okay, so let's do that. Okay, so keep the drawing that I did before. Now what we want is we want to pick, uh, e, we already picked E2 in K1, whereas K1, uh, let me highlight this in pink. So it will stay there. Uh, so this is K1. So we pick the K2 in K1 and then the, and then the uh, look at K1 set minus. Okay, K1 set minus uh, E0 C set minus E1 and set minus E2 is infinite. And on the picture, so this is the pink area is uh, K0, is K1, right? The, the pink area is K1 and we select E2 from K1, okay. And uh, E zero C sub minus E one C minus E two in this region, so this region. So you see the pattern because 
we first pick we first pick uh, e zero and we pick e one and we pick e two. Uh, I'm sorry, this should be e two uh, and we pick e two. So those three sets, what are they in common? They're disjoint. And then next time, if we keep doing these uh, steps, we're going to pick e three in some region that are uh, shaded pink and black region, maybe here. And you can see this is also disjoint from uh, all the three previous sets that we constructed. Okay. And uh, notice that here, if we write it out, so it's equal to E, C, O, C, intersect E, one, C, intersect E, two, C. And what is this? This is equal to uh, the union of E, mm, so the union of E0, union E1, union E2, the complement. Um, and, the, and this uh, so ensures that, so eventually we'll call, we'll call the set as before, that like this one we call it E1, this, this one we call it K1, this one we call it K0, and then we're gonna call this K2. So this ensures that when, we pick E3, E3 from K2, E3 intersect um, E i is empty for all i is equal to one, two, three. And um, right. so this is a, in the math of two, this is a way that we, we try to construct the disjointify uh, sequence of sets, which is different from the first method uh, where we're using this definition to construct a, to construct the disjoint the disjointify sequence of sets. It's, it's different, but both works. Um, okay, so hence we have. E i where i is equal to one to infinity, uh, such that so notice that here we select m is a sigma algebra and then k zero is a subset of of m and e one is a subset of m. Therefore, all of the element in the sequence is going to be uh, in the sigma algebra m. And as we just discussed here. Uh, discussed here with this picture, uh, E i intersect E j is equal to the empty set for all i is not equal to j. And uh, also, uh, we also notice that infinite sequence, uh, which means we are always able to Pick new set we i uh, is joint from all the previous sets in the sequence. Otherwise, we'll reach a contradiction, uh, which is that the same algebra and is finite sigma algebra, which is contradiction. Okay, so therefore, we show the existence and then we finish the um, part A of this problem. And then let's do part B. Um, part B, uh, I need to do a little bit with you. Uh, let me charge my laptop console and I'll get back to this video. Okay, so um, let's go back to part B of the problem and let's do a little review on the cardinality. Um, so the cardinality of set X is smaller than cardinality of set Y. Um, this corresponding to there exists function F from X to Y such that F is Injective. Okay, 
And the second one, so the cardinality of x is equal to the cardinality of y means that there exists a function uh, from x to y such that f is bijective. And for the third one, you're probably uh, gonna guess it is uh, if we have a, a cardinality x or it's larger than cardinality of y, then the function f, there exists a function f that is surjective. Okay, let's see. Uh, so, okay. So our goal in this problem is to show that uh, the cardinality of m is larger or equal than uh, c. And uh, what does this represent? Uh, so another review point is that the cardinality of the power set, uh, well, this looks like probability, the power set of the natural number n is equal to uh, c. So basically our goal is to show the cardinality of M, the sigma algebra, is larger or equal than the cardinality of P, uh, N. Okay, so how to use the review knowledge one to show this goal? Well, uh, we already have M and we have the power set N, right? To show this is larger than that we can, uh, try to show. Well, the first choice is to show that um, there exists a function f from uh, m to the power set n that is subjective. And then Another choice is to show there exists a function from P, from P N to M that is injective. Okay, so there are two choices and we just say which one is easier. Well, we need to construct. So um, this implies we need to uh, construct um, such f, we need to construct such f. And then let's just say, see which function is easier to construct. Okay, so, um, well, we do have, so what do we have so far? Um, we have constructed, let's just call it F, uh, I is equal to one to infinity, um, is in M is an infinite disjoint sequence of sets, right? So we have this and um, and then what we have is, um, we want to use this, right? And then we know that, we notice that this is closely related to this, right? We can make some connections. And um, F is, of course, is in M, and then we, want, we can make some connections here. Uh, intuitively, we can try the first one, but intuitively, I feel and hard to construct a function that takes the set in the sigma algebra and output a uh, an output a uh, natural uh, a subset of natural number. Um, but the but I think this one is easier because uh, consider the function f that is from p n to m by f. For example, uh, let uh, the input is S, right? And then we can output the union I is in S of I by. So um, let's, so we need to show that uh, claim F is injective. Um, okay, and we, and 
recall or interactivity, right? So F is, is injective if and only if. So suppose um, union I in S F I is equal to union I in um, S prime of F I. So we need to show that S is equal to S prime. And let's do a quick proof. So suppose not. Okay. Um, there exists uh, at least K um, such that K is in, so is the K in natural number such that K is in S, but K is not in S prime. Okay, and um, we can write that the union of I is in S, um, I is not equal to K of F I union F K, Well, first of all, uh, because we want to show these two are equal, right? If they don't have the same cardinality, then of course they're, um, of course, um, so, of, so suppose not, suppose S is not equal to S prime, and we want to reach a contradiction that, uh, which is some sort of contradiction. Um, the simplest case is that as, uh, as one element less than S prime, then in that case, of course, the union is going not going to be the same because one uh, does not have uh, one has union yeah, are not same. So, um, so let's only consider about the case that uh, S is not equal to S prime, but they have the same cardinality. Okay, so there that means there at least there exists at least k, uh, k prime, there are both natural numbers such that k is in S and k prime is in S prime. Um, and the k is not in, equal to k prime. And then the others are the same. So we can write, uh, continue the, uh, writing here, so this is equal to the union of i is in s of f i, and this is equal to by assumption i is in s prime of f i, and if we keep writing this, is equal to i is in s prime, i is not in k prime of f i union f k prime, and because we assume that those two uh, are the same. We assume that in the set as, when you compare set S and the set S prime, the only difference is that um, one contains K, one contains K prime, and all the other elements in those two sets are exactly the same. So therefore, uh, this, e this equality can be further simplified to FK is equal to FK prime, okay? But, uh, K is not equal to K prime. This implies that F, um, that means FK intersect FK prime is not equal to uh, empty set. So that, is, that shows the sequence FJ, where J is equal to one to infinity, is not a uh, disjoint sequence of sets. And that is a contradiction because by part A, because F, uh, because at the beginning we choose this to be a uh, disjoint sequence of set, and uh, hence um, uh, F is injective, and hence so the cardinality of M is larger equal than C, and we finish our proof.